Today, we're going to be looking at 12 players to target in your fantasy drafts to help you build your fantasy team, so to help you get ready for those drafts that are coming up. If you're into this, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we're dropping content every day, helping you build your fantasy teams, whether it's Redraft, Dynasty, Devi. We are here for you. John Cena's watching. Don't disappoint him either. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. But let's dig into this. Make sure you watch to the end because I got a rookie here that has fallen in drafts that might have a ton of upside this year that you need to pay attention to. But let's dig in here. Tua Tonga Viola, QB 10 and ADP. Miami's 15th in plays last year, 61% pass rate. So they like to move the football in the air. They also like to have a fast pace. They want to keep the offense humming like all teams, but they really want to have the pace kicked up. 8.9 yards per attempt last year, 50% deep ball completion rate. You also got Waddle, you got Hill, you got some weapons. They brought in Devin a chain. Talks about Dalvin Cook. QB 10, cheap price point if you want to go late on your quarterback. Expensive price point if you want to have a QB2, but he's in that range where you might be able to capture some upside. Next player we're looking at here is J.K. Dobbins, RB18 and ADP, so he's being valued as a mid to late RB2 in drafts. Tom Munkin's there. Maybe we can open things up. Maybe we can increase the pace of the offense. 43.5% juke rate, one of the best in the NFL, especially after the season when he was able to cook. 10.9% breakaway run rate, so he still has the athleticism, even coming back from the injury. That is something to note, and we're coming back to a season where he's going to be able to start things off healthy. RB18 price tag is a good price to look at for a running back with a ton of upside. Going on to another running back with some juice here. RB21 Cam Akers finished the season strong last year after having a horrific start, coming back from an Achilles injury, and now we're speculating that should continue starting the season, at least the volume should, and after that, the cards are going to fall where they may, but he did finish the year out strong. Henderson's gone. There's not much competition in the offense to steal his workload, so it should be him getting workload, and then whatever happens from there, being valued as an RB2, probably the appropriate price where he should have been valued all along. RB21 is a good spot to get in the running back. If you're later on running back, if you're going 0 RB and you're just going a little bit earlier than what the program suggests, you might be looking at Cam Akers. You might be looking at him because you know he's getting some volume. Depending on what you're doing with your strategies and depending on what falls to you in your actual drafts. Going on to the next player, Kadarius Tony. He is wide receiver 37 and underdog ADP right now. 2.13 yards per route last year. 1.79 target separation per player profile. So there are some good things in the numbers if you really dig in there. Also, things started to ramp up at the tail end of the season too. If you look at the chart there in the production, that might come into play this season as we get a full offseason with the team. That might happen. You can also speculate on Sky Moore or Shea Wright, whoever you want in this offense. The goal here, the premise, is try to get that wide receiver one off the Chiefs or try to get that asset off the Chiefs that's going to just increase the value of your fantasy team. A lot of people are pegging Kadarius Tony, and for him being on the Chiefs, for him getting all this publicity off the news, off the buzz from beat risers, being wide receiver 37, pretty decent price tag still considering how nuclear this offense can be. Going to our next guy, Daniel Jones, QB 14 and ADP. Say you don't want to, uh, say you want to go a little cheaper. Say you're really going zero QB, late round quarterback, whatever you want to call it. Daniel Jones might be a guy you want to look at here. A lot of people are talking him up, especially on the Twitters. 0.57 in fantasy points per drop back, seventh among quarterbacks last year. 75.7% true completion rate. This is also per player profiler. 708 rushing yards last year, so he's got a little bit of that Konami code. That helps his floor from a week-to-week -week basis if he's getting a little bit of rushing production per game, which is something you can bank on there. QB14, very good price tag because you're stacking up at running back and wide receivers if he becomes your QB1. But but if you want him as your QB2, 
that might be a good player to get as well. And then you can play the matchups. I usually tend to say, hey, just get one. And then if something happens to that quarterback, just stream. But it's however you want to build your team because it is your team. And I'm just here giving you suggestions. Moving on to Elijah Moore, wide receiver 44 and ADP. We love Elijah Moore. I talk about him a lot. Broke that out as a rookie. Has Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson should kick things up this year. We should also see an uptick in the passing game. The clips from minicamp looked really good. Looks like this team's gelling, especially in the offense when they're throwing the ball. They also didn't re-sign Kareem Hunt. They have Nick Chubb as the lone wolf there at running back. They have some other jabronis. But this is an indicator that, hey, this team might just wing the football around if something happens. His profile coming out of college from Ole Miss was immaculate. Age 19 breakout, 41.9% dominator rating. Early breakout age is a good thing. High draft capital. Produced as a rookie with the Jets. Had a bad season last year because the Jets did Jets things. Elijah Moore is now in a grand situation. And you're getting him at wide receiver 44 per underdog fantasy ADP. Moving on to Juwan Johnson, TE21 and ADP. TE21 and ADP is dirt cheap for a tight end. Might be going undrafted in a lot of your leagues because a lot of people shouldn't be drafting two tight ends anyways. Should just get that one and play the wide river wire from there because there's not much difference between like the tight end 25 and the tight end 12 in most weeks when you look at the numbers. 9.4 average depth of target, 609 air yards, ninth in the league last year. As Derek Carr now, he'll sling it downfield a little bit, but better acuity of targets. Better targets going his way should be happening. Cheap, 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 cheap upside. That is what we're looking at here. Cheap upside, especially if you're going zero tight end, late round tight end, whatever you're doing. Guy you want to look at or think about why he's on the waiver wire if he doesn't get drafted. Next, we're looking at Anthony Richardson, QB 11 and ADP. I talked about him on another video. But the schedule looks grand at the tail end of the season. You can really see something happen after bye week and him giving you that rushing production, really elevating your fantasy team. Remember, 4'4", 340 yard dash at 244 pounds, 99th percentile size adjusted speed score. That's going to account for something. He can just suck at football, be inaccurate, throw interceptions. But if he's on the field, he's running around a little bit, there is still an opportunity for incredible upside as he's developing as a rookie. That is the thing we want to point out. This back in the schedule could account for that and could allow him to be one of the top assets in Dynasty Fantasy Football as we lead into 2024. Going to Rashad Bateman, wide receiver 45 and ADP. He is starting to get cheaper, and I said this in the start of the offseason back in February. He's coming back from a Liz Frank, so there might be a slow start, but now this is starting to get baked into the price here, so this is something we might want to capitalize on. He has flashed his potential. He's just been injured a lot, and he was very productive coming out of Minnesota with a good breakout age, so a lot of things to look at here. 1.95 yards per route run with Lamar Jackson, and over the last two years, that ranks 26th among wide receivers. So he can be efficient on the field. Now we're looking at Jahan Dotson, wide receiver 38 and ADP. One of my favorite sleepers or mid-round gets in redraft this year. Had a good tail into the season. 14.6 points in his last five games. That's PPR. Five games with six plus targets. He, when he's healthy and on the field, he gets targeted. He scores fancy points. Did that as a rookie while coming back from some of these injuries. Next, we're looking at Tank Bigsby, wide receiver 46 and ADP. We got some news saying he was looking good in the passing game, but we also have clips on my channel from a few weeks ago of him and Minicamp running routes, breaking off routes, looking better than what was advertised coming out for the draft. And the thing is, he was a high-end recruit coming out of high school, looked good during his career at Auburn, had some big moments, Got drafted in the third round by the Jaguars when there were other running backs on the board, so they liked him. And really, when you're getting him at RB46, which is damn near free, it's double-digit rounds, you're buying the Jaguars' offense here. You're getting a piece of Trevor Lawrence. They can move the football. He's a pounder between the tackles, and there's some upside here that you can capitalize on. A lot of these running backs that hit in the later rounds, usually they're not veterans because those veterans have already shown what they can do. They're usually the guys year one, year two, year three that's now starting to come up and they pop off. So if you're looking for a late round running back that pops off, look for younger guys who are explosive, have something in their profile, early rounder, 
get an opportunity in a good offense that you can just gamble on. And you gamble on those late round picks. Tank Bigsby is one of them. Next, and this is the rookie I was talking about in the start of the video, so I hope you paid attention this long. Jaden Reed, wide receiver, 73 and ADP. There's 239 vacated targets in this offense. They might slow things down due to Jordan Love, which makes a lot of sense, and they got two good running backs. He broke out with two different collegiate programs. That is very hard to do at the college level, especially doing it at a young age, at age 18. And a lot of people liked him. Watching him on field, he's very nuanced, strong hands, good to catch point. A lot of good things are coming out of camp about him. And in training camps coming up, I guarantee his price might increase going forward once we get in the training camp. You want to look out for that. Also, a second round pick. The Packers thought he was good. They drafted him. He was a top 50 player in the NFL draft. Players drafting in the top 50 have a decent hit rate when it comes to fantasy. So that's something you want to look at. Jaden Reed could be a huge sleeper in redraft this year. But those are 12 players that we are looking at as targets right now. I'll have more target sleepers on the channel here soon. So make sure you hit that subscribe button right now so you don't miss out. And I'm going to help you set up the lineups all offseason long along with those waiver wire gets. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.